And welcome to Working With What You Got. I'm your host, Renee Joshua Porter, and I am so glad that you decided to join us. Remember, our program is all about you realizing that you have more than you think you have. You have more time, you have more talent, you have more resources, you have more food, you have more faith, you have more energy, you have more creativity, you have more people on your side, and it is time to unlock your mind. Well, I am glad you tuned in today because we're going to start off like we always do and we are going to cook. Now you remember, our philosophy is you got to be able to make something out of nothing. And how many times have you opened up that pantry and thought, I don't have anything to cook? Er, wrong answer. I'm going to show you how to make a simple, healthy, economical veggie patty. Very, very easy. Now, I first of all want to give credit and thanks to my sister-in-law, Marilyn Joshua, because Marilyn really is very innovative and is a very, very good cook. And she always told me about these oatmeal patties that she made. So I called her up and I said, tell me about the oatmeal patties. And she told me, well, you make this, you make that. And there was a, quite a bit more ingredients than I had access to. So I'm making Marilyn's oatmeal patties but it's Renee's twist on it because I don't have a lot of ingredients. So let me tell you what I'm going to use. I'm going to start off with half a cup of cooked lentils. Just simple lentils. Just cook them the night before. Put a little seasoned salt in it. What I like to do is soak my lentils the night before. Just cook them. Get them nice and tender. So it's half a cup of cooked lentils. Now, in Marilyn's recipe, she was saying, she didn't even mention lentils. I use lentils because it was in the fridge. She said you should boil a couple of potatoes. Guess what? I don't buy white potatoes. I really don't. But my husband happened to have bought some tater tots for the kids as a little treat. So guess what tater tots are made out of? Potatoes. So we're using tater tots instead of potatoes. So I took a quarter cup of tater tots. They were frozen. I thawed them out in the toaster oven for maybe about seven minutes. Tater tots, lentils, simple. What's the third ingredient? You should know by now, if you've been one of our regular viewers, I am a big fan of oatmeal. I like oats. I think oats are nutrient dense and they're a good grain. Even though a lot of people say they're an allergen, I happen to like oats and I like to see them transform. So we have a cup of oats. I used quick cook oats. They were $1.99 for the box. Oats. So here we have our oats. We're now going to add in our lentils. Throw in the tater tots. That's the ingredients. Oatmeals, lentils, tater tots. And then I'm going to get kind of messy today, and I'm going to use my fingers. My hands are nice and clean, and I'm going to tell you what I put in it. I put in garlic powder. I would say this is equivalent. What I, when I did it at home, it was about three tablespoons of garlic powder because you want to really get the seasoning in there. All of these ingredients are pretty absorbent, so we want to make sure that our seasoning get in there. So we use garlic powder, and I like to get granulated garlic. I like that better than just garlic powder. It's more concentrated. And I use granulated onion or onion powder. So equal amount of onion powder and garlic powder. Sea salt. 
And this you're gonna really salt to taste. The first time I did it, it didn't seem like it had enough salt, and then after I cooked it, it was way too salty. So I would say less is more. Go on the light side with the salt and then build up. That's all your ingredients. And now you're just gonna kinda put the water in there and make it moist. You don't want it runny, you want it moist. You're gonna mash it up with your fork. And I wanna give a special thanks to Tom Mealy, because Tom hooked us up where you can see what's happening. Isn't that great? Tom is the bomb.com. Thank you, Tom. Because so many times our viewers say, we want to see the food, we want to see the food. Now you can see the food. And guess what's up there? Do you see this fierce backdrop? That is our Facebook page, Working What You Got. Please like us, comment. Tell us all the good stuff. Tell us the bad stuff, too. I can take it. I can take it. <laughs> Do you hear me echoing? What's that happening? Okay, so this is what we're, and I'm going to show you what the batter looks like. So this is me preparing it. And this is what it will look like. Oops. You have your non -stick, stick skillet, and I like to use olive oil. Just an olive oil spray. Lightly coat your pan. And you're just going to make a little patty. Three pinches, you put it in there. Gently form it. And you're going to brown it. That's it. Oatmeals, lentils, tater tots. Season to taste, add water, form your patty, and brown. This is what it's going to look like. You like that? Now, Marilyn gave me a really good, simple recipe for a very easy little gravy. So I'm going to show you. She said, you open up a can of cream of mushroom soup. I don't like a lot of canned stuff. You're not going to see me with a lot of canned items on here because we know there's a lot of preservatives and so forth. But every now and then, we want to make a quick little gravy, a quick little cheap meal. I try to get a low sodium one, cream of mushroom. I'm going to put it in here, open it up. Equal part of water and soy sauce. That's it. And stir. Cream of mushroom. Did I say cream? Cream. I sound like Elmer Fudd. Cream of mushroom and soy sauce. Nice, right? Mix it up. Let's give a little taste. Milani gave me a spoon earlier. I got rid of it. Nice. Let's turn these over. They're not really getting that brown. Probably if we had more time. These are, this is the color that you want it to get. And what I like to do whenever I'm using oatmeal in any type of patty, once I brown it, save for about four minutes on each side. For the last five minutes, I usually take it and put it inside of the toaster oven to make sure that inside is not gooey or gummy. While I'm preparing the other ingredients, I just like to put it in there to kind of draw some of that moisture out. So what I'm going to do, only because I want to heat up my topping, I'm going to take them out and I'm going to heat up Marilyn's gravy. Can you see everything? Are you able to see it? Milani, are they seeing this? Doesn't that? They're seeing it? Woo hoo! All it is is cream of mushroom and soy sauce. That's it. And you have a lovely gravy. We're just heating it up. And I'm going to call Paulie out in a minute because Paulie's our taster. 
I made some noodles earlier, and we're going to heat it up with the noodles. Mmm. Mmm. Mmm la la sa soon. Milani, can I get those noodles? Thank you, my love. Come on, come on, come on. Milani's always trying not to be on camera. What's wrong with her? All right, so I'm going to plate my noodles on here. Where's Paulie? Paulie, Paulie, Paulie. I'm going to put the ones we cooked earlier on here. They're nice and brown. There he comes. The man, the myth, the legend. <laughs> the fat guy. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Paulie. So you're going to taste the little uh, oatmeal croquettes. And I put it on a little bit of pasta for you. Like pasta, Paulie. You like you like pasta. How did I know you like pasta, Paulie? I knew you like pasta. This looks like fantastic. I hope the noodles are warm. We just kind of okay. we cooked them earlier. Fantastic. They're good. Okay. Nice, nice crunch. It likes crunch. Okay. Unbelievable. You digging it? Oh my. You digging it? How's the flavor? Fantastic. And you know, he's brutally honest, you know, so if he didn't like it, he'd been like, uh. No, this is really, very You digging good, it? Very well. Are you missing meat? Are you feeling like, I, I still no, want a not steak? No, not at all. You're not? I okay. Don't feel that at all. Now, you know, it's just lentils, potato, and oatmeal in that, in this. That's it. I love lentils. You do? I love oatmeal. Oh, they said to speak up. They can't hear you. Can't come, wait. come closer. Well, that, I like that it tastes like no meat, but it's delicious. Oh. <laughs> Thank you, Paulie. Thank you. This is the bomb. <laughs> you like it? I love doing your show because I, the only reason why I come here is to eat. There you go. That's it. I don't, I don't eat before I get here. I wait for her to cook. Simple. Bye. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. <laughs> you see how easy that was? Tater tots, oatmeal, lentils. Add water. Put your little seasonings in there. Form your patty. Use a no-stick no skillet. Coat it with your olive oil. Moisten your patty. Moisten it. You don't want it runny. You're not trying to make pancakes. You're trying to make a nice little croquette. Form your croquette. Brown it on both sides. Make your nice little gravy. Bada bing, bada boom. You got it. You can do this. If I can do it, you can do it. Take the limits off your mind. You have more than you think you have. And stay tuned because we'll be right back with Hugh Maybray, and he is a master masseuse, and he's going to help to take the knots out of our body and our mind after this. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville and run Cockman, New York. And we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkman, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me 
Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. Are you planning an event and want to include entertainment, but you're not sure where to turn? Act1Entertainment.net has provided over 1,500 events with quality, affordable live entertainment at private parties, corporate affairs, festivals, bike rallies, and more. Act1 will fit into your budget. They're friendly, reliable, and do all the legwork for you. They take all major credit cards. Log on to Act1Entertainment.net for a free, no-obligation price quote. Or call 631-758-3505 for a brochure. You'll be happy you did. Now. Hello, and we are working with what you got. I'm your host, Renee Joshua Porter, and I'm so glad that you're still here because we have a dear, 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 dear. Did I say enough dears? A dear friend of mine. Hugh Maybray. I've known Hugh forever. His sister is my best friend on the planet, and he is a master masseuse. And he's come here today to help us take the knots out. Hello, Hugh. Hi, Renee. I'm so glad you're here. Thank you so much <laughs> for having me. All right, so Hugh, tell us about your path, the journey that you took um, to get to where you are now. Yes. Well, you know, in life you have to decide how you're going to give back to your community. Okay. So I thought that way. Mm -hmm. And through some spiritual guidance, okay. I was able to find a massage school in the Long Island area. Okay. And from there, one thing led to another, and I graduated from that school and became a licensed massage therapist. And soon after, I continued and became an acupuncturist. Mm -hmm. And it's just made such a rewarding, fulfilling um, life so far that I've got to interact with so many people and really help people um, to be the best they can be. Now tell me something, what are some of the um, current issues that you encounter you know as a as a masseuse? Yeah well I am a holistic healthcare practitioner. Okay. So holistic means that we look at the whole body, everything is connected. So basically the two thoughts, holism versus reductionism, Explain reductionism. I never yeah, heard that reductionism term. is kind of Western medicine where the doctor reduces everything to its simplest component. Okay. And they just want to look at that and think it's not connected to the rest of the body. Okay, so if your nose is running, let me give you something to dry that up, not what caused the nose to run. Exactly. It got you. So in Chinese medicine or holism, we know that your nose may be connected to your toe. Mm. And that may help relieve your stuffiness and your runniness by manipulating areas of the toe. So it's that you know, type of thought process that allows me to look at the whole person. So is that called reflexology? Uh, no, it's, it's just holism, where the okay. whole body is connected and everything works together. Okay, now I remember, this is a little sidebar, I remember when I first had my daughter that I was really, you know, this new mom trying to stay away from medicine. And I can remember if she ever got stuffy, I used to massage her feet, you know, with olive oil and even garlic. And yes. I used to, she used to stink, but I would, you know, it would work. And I would put it inside of her sock and mm -hmm. it kind of went through her whole body. So it does work. Yes, massage is over 10,000 years old. There are depictions on cave walls of massage. Wow. And, you know, it's innate for a mother, if your stomach hurts or the baby's stomach, to rub. So to women, kind of touching is kind of a, 
a natural um, instinct. Yeah, it really is. Yes. Now tell me, Hugh, some of the challenges that you've had to deal with, say, maybe in yourself, you know, make segueing into this. I know there's a lot of skeptics and opposition that you've encountered. Mm -hmm. So tell me, share that with me. Uh, yeah. Well, you know, the skeptics seem to be more outside of the realm of the individual person, where the individual person are making individual choices about their health. They're empowered to make choices. They're tired of the runaround that they've been getting with the regular doctors, never seem to get better. Okay. So individuals make a choice. Um, holism usually isn't covered by insurance because okay. it's more about wellness and not illness. So it's wellness-based, not illness-based. So I, I like that phrase. Yes. It's wellness based, not yes. illness based. Yes. Okay, so And and the wellness has to do with a homeodynamic model. So the homeodynamic model is the mind and body integrated together. Mind body integration. So a lot of times it's fair to say if your mind is pretty knotted up and your mind is pretty um uh tangled, it can affect your health. Renee, that is so true. And, you know, there are sources of imbalance in the homeodynamic model. And the first one is emotions. We recognize the emotional component. And the emotional component has to do with how we perceive stress. Mm. And let me tell you how the body works. First, stress is accumulated in the cells, the tissues of the body. So that's the somatic response. Mm. And once it's in your tissues, once your tissues get snotted up, then it goes into the mind. So then there's a cognitive response in the brain, which we know as post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's some type of traumatic stress, and there's a long-term potentiation where the memories go deep in the brain, and the person starts reliving these emotions over and over again from the mind to the body and back and forth. Okay, that's really deep, Hugh. I, I just got to pause on that a second. That, yes. No, that's really important. Thank you for saying that. How do you get an individual to realize that what they may be experiencing in their body might really have something to do with a stress, that's a stressor that's happening in their environment? You know, how do you get them to see that connection when we've been programmed to pop Tylenol, to pop a leaf, mm -hmm. you know what I mean, to pop beer, to pop rum, anything to numb what's going on? How do you reprogram yourself? Yes, well, the first thing is, to realize that, that you, know, you want a different type of coping mechanism instead mm. of um, the poor coping mechanisms, that you have positive instead of negative coping mechanisms. Realizing that you want something better um, for yourself, to recognize that you're not sleeping well. That's one, I think, the first signs that you're undergoing stress, that you're not sleeping well. Mm. Um, your, your digestion gets poor. Um, even sexual function can start to diminish. Mm. Um, headaches. So everything connected with the stress response what has, has to do with the um, sympathetic nervous system. So the sympathetic nervous system is your fight or flight. Parasympathetic is rest and digest. We get stuck in that sympathetic response. Okay, but say that one more time. Yes. The sympathetic is your fight or flight. Yes. And what's the other the one? Parasympathetic. Parasympathetic. Is what is that? Rest and digest. Explain that. What is parasympathetic? Yeah, parasympathetic is part of the nervous system that where the body wants to be. The parasympathetic is when the body is repairing itself, mm. you feel good, the muscle tension is low, the blood sugar is stable. Mm. Okay. Et cetera. Yes. Wow. Yes. So now those are the signs we could start looking at. Yes. I'm seeing I'm dealing with indigestion. Mm -hmm. I'm seeing that I'm having these headaches. I can't seem to shake the headaches. Yes. Right? I'm having trouble sleeping. Those are alerts. And even with women, irregular menses. Yes. Can, and you know, actually the menses can stop or excess bleeding. Okay. So all those are signs that, that you have stress. So am I correct in saying don't take these abnormal things as a signal to be ignored? No. Right? It's, a, it's the body speaking. Yes. The body speaking. Acknowledge it. Yes. And don't ignore it. Yes. Because I always hear people say, like, so-and-so had a stroke or so-and-so had an aneurysm and they had no symptoms. And every time I hear that, something about that phrase bothers me. Mm -hmm. There is a symptom. Yes. But maybe it was just a symptom that we ignore or we, we pacify, mm -hmm. right? Yes. Yes, we keep going on. 
And, you know, emotionally is one thing, but also skeletal muscularly. You see a lot of people with their shoulders up by their ears, you know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like me? Are you like, like yeah, my, right. my shoulders up by right. my ears? Or you see someone that has an um, um, a, a talgic gait, you know, their walk is almost like a limp, okay. you know, and their head may be cocked to one side. So a lot of the stress gets magnified in the muscle tissue. The muscle holds memories of our emotions that we encounter every day. So a head cocked to the side yeah. might mean that something's going on. Yes. <laughs> I keep my head to yes. the side, Hugh. Yes. Now you have me thinking about it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and also things like poor diet, lack of proper sleep, also the weather. You know, when it's cold, you tend to crunch up. Too much heat can affect people. We have parasites. Okay, now stop there mm -hmm. a minute. I remember asking a regular doctor about parasites, and he basically shut me down and said it didn't exist. Oh. He, he did. He said it didn't exist. I remember one time way back, like maybe about 20 years ago, when I think I was very toxic, you know, and I can remember saying to him, that I think that I have some parasites. Just what I was reading, you know, dandruff, eczema, all mm. kinds of stuff that was going on. Even not trying to be gross when you have a really pu uh, putrid smell with your elimination, a sign of toxicity in the body. Yes. And he was like, no, that doesn't exist. So tell me, tell me something about parasites. Yes, well, you know, the food that we eat, and if you travel outside of our country, you may be exposed to parasites. And these parasites can be asymptomatic from some time, but they're taking nutrients from the body. They're reproducing in your body. Mm. Yes, yes. So now you have this parasitic load that's making you fatigued, et cetera, you know, things you can't think clearly. Foggy. Yes. But the doctor, they have tests where they can determine if you have parasites or not. So I don't think it's even that expensive. Really? But that may be the cause of the problem. Maybe he didn't want to get to the cause. Got you. Yeah, but they should always consider parasites, especially when they want to think outside the box when other things aren't seem, seeming to add up and be logical. Now, I know this is a question that we didn't talk about before, Hugh, so if you want to not answer it and think about it, I just, I hear a lot of times people say that holistic medicine and natural foods are so expensive. They say, you know, I want to go to that holistic doctor. I want to go to that masseuse. I want to go to the chiropractor. But because my insurance doesn't cover it, it's so expensive. I want to go to the acupuncturist, but I can't afford, you know, $85 every treatment or whatever. Mm -hmm. What can you do? What can be the baby steps to start implementing this into your life? Well, you know, having some type of regular treatment, even if it's once a month, starts to bring you back towards your center. You know, it helps you to resend yourself. And it is expensive. Insurance is not going to cover wellness because it would be an ongoing um, expense. You know, we only see your doctor when you're ill. But the relationship that my clients have with me, they see me on a regular base, basis because they want to maintain their health. And, you know, the saying is you can pay now, you can pay later. Mm -hmm. So, yes, you may have to pay upfront for herbs and acupuncture massage now, but look at the cost of getting surgery and chemotherapy and radiation and um, prescription drugs in the future. I mean, there's no um, comparison to the cost. It's really cost effective and it has low side effects. Mm -hmm. So people are more and more willing to pay out of pocket for these things because they're getting the results. Mm -hmm. And it's not that I'm um, boohooing Western medicine. You know, it's about integrative medicine. We find what's best for the client. So if they need the Western approach, we recommend the Western approach. If the holistic approach is best, then we stay with that. Mm -hmm. Now, I have, find, I have found that there's more holistic practitioners that are willing to integrate conventional medicine than conventional medicine that wants to integrate the holistic. You yes. know, have you found that? That's absolutely true. Why? Why? What do well, you think? Well, you know, the, there's, a, there's a slice of the pie and they want the slice and they don't want to share with anyone else. <laughs> you know, it is kind of a threat um, where Western medicine is great for emergencies. You know, if I'm bleeding, please stop the bleeding. But once you stabilize me, Eastern medicine is probably the best way to go for chronic conditions. Chronic conditions. Okay, tell yes. us about acupuncture. I know for a fact I've had mm -hmm. acupuncture before. It works. 
Yes. I remember I had a bad back spasm. I don't know what happened, what pulled. I was doubled over in pain. I could not move. Um, a friend of mine, she told me about this chiropractor that practices acupuncture. I went in, he put, I'm scared of needles. I'm scared. I'm really scared of needles, mm -hmm. you. Very scared. But I went in and I was so desperate. I was like, okay, I'm just going to close my eyes. And it actually wasn't even that painful because the needles are so very thin. And he put some inside of my ears. Yes. And I was able to walk out of his office. I came and doubled up, but I was able to walk out. Mm -hmm. Well, Chinese medicine itself is over 10,000 years old. Mm -hmm. And there are acupuncture points from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet. And each acupuncture location has a unique function. Mm. And um, the beauty of acupuncture is that it deals with the chi. It deals with the underlying energy, the life force of the body. And this life force is always moving. So it moves to the surface of the skin, and then it moves deep into the organs and back to the surface of the skin. Mm -hmm. So by manipulating the points on the surface, we affect the working of the internal organs. Wow. And, you know, you're saying why Western medicine feels threatened. They know the power of touch. Uh, when you look at the embryo, the same layer, embryonic layer that the skin is derived from, the nervous system is derived from that same layer. So when you touch someone therapeutically, it has an effect on the central nervous system. And that's what Western medicine wants to affect. They know the central nervous system is where healing begins. And that's what their medications, drugs affect. Okay, see, I didn't know that. So you're saying the central nervous system, that's like the, everybody wants that area. That's the area, that's the key part for everything to happen from there. Yes, it is. Oh, we're going to be right back. I, I want to go further with that Great. right after this. Dr. Robert Brevard. I'm here for Multimedicine in Westbury, New York. We're located at 1065 Old Country Road, Suite 214. Been here for about 15 years. The practice has medical doctors, physical therapists, chiropractors, acupuncturists. We also do pain management and we have orthopedists on staff. Here at Advanced Multimedicine Rehabilitation, we've got physical therapists on staff who treat an array of conditions from neck pain to back pain, shoulder pain. We treat carpal tunnel. We treat a lot of car accident patients, slip and falls. We treat patients with knee injuries, with ankle injuries. We have state-of-the-art equipment. We've been here for over we do 15 years. We a vast array of diagnostic testing from x-rays to EMGs. What is an EMG? It's a diagnostic test that allows a doctor to determine where the pinched nerve is. Cora is a physical therapist at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. She's working on Stephanie, who was involved recently in an automobile accident. Stephanie has tight thoracic and cervical musculature, and Cora is doing some myofascial release work and some therapeutic stretching doing it to help her with her pain. Vicki is also a patient here at Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Vicki is now working her leg muscles, specifically her quadricep muscles, trying to strengthen them after an injury she sustained. Find yourself in need of any type of physical therapy. Please don't hesitate to call Advanced Multimedicine and Rehabilitation. Located in Westbury, New York, in Suite 214. Phone number is 516-334-7000. Or find us on our website at advancedmultimedicine.com. This is Beth. Hi. Hi. Oh, congratulations. When are you due? I'm not pregnant. Oh, look at that. Excuse me. You're totally thin. You look very sexy. For life's bleachable moments, all it takes is three quarters of a cup.
Being a fireman is more than just putting out blazes and giving kittens CPR. Sometimes my duty demands I fan the flames, like when a call comes in from a lady who needs immediate assistance. Maybe she needs help with that computer thing. Maybe she wants to go antique. Could be as simple as understanding that walking in heels is... It's hard. Aussi simple que l'été dernier à Paris. C'est sympa. Maybe it's Ladies Night In, and she wants a simple, delicious recipe for margaritas with a twist. First, a can of limeade. Now hold on to this. You'll be using it. Side note, kittens make everything better. Next, add water. Now, a bottle of light beer. It's not shh. Trust me, I'm a professional. And last and most important, Sousa Blue Tequila. Now, mix it up. Ole. Yes, that's what I'm trained for. Whether it's to help her choose leggings or pants, telling her leggings are pants, or discussing leggings and jeggings versus pant pegging at her next ladies' night in, I'll come to the rescue. Don't call me a hero. Just call me. Let me know what time. Hi, we are back. You've tuned in to Working With What You Got. I'm your host, Renee Joshua Porter, and I have Master Masseuse Hugh Maybray here. And we were talking before, and he was telling us a lot of awesome information about how we can take the knots out of our life, out of our body, out of our diet, out of our, out of our mind. And now we're going to see the master at work. Hugh is going to use Milani here as our uh, uh, model. And go ahead, Hugh, tell us, begin to tell us, you know, some yes. initial things that you do. Well, getting massage is great, but you want to make sure that you protect yourself, that you will get a licensed massage therapist, especially in New York State. So to verify that someone does have a license, we go to a website, Office of the Profession. So that's op.nys for New York State, okay. .gov. So the Office of the Professions regulates all professions in New York State. So all those professions have licenses, and each individual person can be verified through that website. So if they're not on that website in New York State, I would not allow them to touch me because they may injure you. You know, the edict is do no harm, and the extensive training that massage therapists have, we learn all the indications and contraindications for different illnesses mm. so that we are trained. We have over 1,000 hours of training. So we are professional. We have anatomy and physiology. Okay. That way we can communicate with doctors and work on different pathologies. We also take pathology. So the mm. course pathology, we learn about all the different disease processes. I like to think of the massage therapist as the first line in healthcare defense because we spend more time with our clients than any other healthcare practitioner. And we get to see the front and the back. So if there's any changes, to the skin, any changes to moles, anything going on, we can alert our clients to go see their doctor. I like that you said the first line of what defense? Of defense, healthcare. First line of healthcare defense, I like that. Yes, it is the massage therapist. Also, the massage therapists learn about myology and kinesiology. Which What's myology? Myology is a study of the muscles. Okay. And kinesiology is a study of movement. Mm. Also, we learn ethics, so we learn ethical behavior so that everyone feels safe and secure 
when they're on the table. That's very important mm. for the person because that puts you in the healing mode when you can relax and you get therapeutic touch. Okay. Right, also, right. yes, also big, we have public health. So every massage therapist knows about public health, knows about universal precautions against blood-borne pathogens. Mm. So it's very important for sanitation yes. because we get many people on our table. So we have to make sure that we're not transmitting disease from one client to the next. So we are very vigilant in hand washing, sanitizing, et cetera. Wow. So that's very you know, important. I really didn't know it was that involved. I didn't. I really didn't. That, you're really teaching me a lot. Yes. So the massage is a systematic way of addressing the body for health and wellness. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now what are you doing? Well, you know, the different knots that can be present, you know, can be in the neck and the head. So if someone has headaches, we can ad um, address the temporal muscles. You know, there are muscles of chewing, of mastication, so that's important. Also, the muscle around the scalp here is very important. And the neck muscles, so anything going on with the neck, TMJ, headaches, mm. can be addressed with this. And, you know, working with what you got, I have a nice blend of massage oil, but you know what? You can use olive oil. Yes. You can use a mineral oil. Really? Grape seed oil is also good to use. Um, coconut, a lot of people I like I love the, coconut. Yeah. Yeah, so you can, you know, work with what you got to get <laughs> these knots out, you know, but it's good if, you know, the, the massage therapist will bring some oil with them. If you have your own personal oil, your personal blend that you like, you know, it's always good to have that that way you can, you know, it's not contaminated. What do you think so about right. aromatherapy? Oh, yes. Well, aromatherapy is very important. You know, the olfactories goes right to the brain. So it does have a therapeutic effect on the brain. And just the regular smells of lemon, of rose. So you can take some lemons or limes that you have at home, and you can crush them up, and you can add it to the oil. You could take some fresh roses, rose petals, and get that aroma of the roses. Um, also herbs, any type of herbs, oregano, parsley, yes. anything that you want to put into the oil, you know, gives the oil a greater therapeutic um, effect. I used to use oregano oil. I know that that's very um, good as an um, antiseptic. Yes. There are a lot of it's strong. Have, yes, it is strong. Antiseptic properties, antiviral properties. I never thought about putting the roses inside of the oil. I use castor oil. I use coconut oil and olive oil. Um, every now and then, I use jojoba oil, which I really like for my face. Yes, I like that for my face. Yes. Yeah, so part of the massage does address the skin, so it does help to exfoliate and also helps to moisten and nourish the skin. Mmm. And, you know, with getting your massage, it's very important that the person stays hydrated. Mm -hmm. You know, the muscles, just relax. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> and you notice that we just exposed the body part that we're working on so the person is kept warm and comfortable. And if any time you feel uncomfortable, please let me know. <laughs> okay. Yes. And you had a question? I did. Okay, so now say for instance, uh -huh. I don't want to be in your way, say for instance you want to start um, integrating massage into your daily life. So what can be some of the massage tips you could start doing on yourself? Yes, well self-care is very important, um, especially for the therapist where we are not on the table. But you know, just like doing neck rolls, rolling your head slowly in one direction, allowing yourself to explore any areas of tension. And once you go 360 degrees, then you slowly may rotate your head in another direction where you hesitate and allow the neck to stretch out. Also, you know, just having a good exercise program, um, mild to moderate exercise, sedentary lifestyle is not recommended anymore. But more and more, we find ourselves at the computer, behind the steering wheel, driving, and um, all that is bad for our posture, and it causes imbalances for the future. Mm -hmm. So getting regular massages is really a treat for yourself and for your mind. You know, a lot of times I will see even older Asian couples walking mm -hmm. in the neighborhood, and you even see them stretching. 
you know, and sometimes you can tell that they're up there in age, that they might be 70, maybe even 80 years old. But that whole movement and being out um, in nature, in the fresh air, it's really a part of their everyday living. Yes, it is. And you should do it on a regular basis. You know, what I'm doing mechanically is improving the circulation, but the person can do that themselves by being active. Mm -hmm. But the difference is when you're passive on the table, we can address any muscle imbalances. We have a lot of hip and knee replacements lately, and a lot of them are due to long-term imbalances within the hips. So you get uneven wear and tear on the body. One side wears out before the other, and once that side wears out, then you put more stress on the other side, and that side starts to wear out. So the massage really keeps the body in balance. The body, the symmetry, the muscles are all maintained. So it's maintaining the temple that the massage addresses. Mm. Yes. Maintaining the temple. Mm -hmm. Dr. Hugh, you are schooling us today. <laughs> How you feel, Milani? I feel great. My neck feels great. Your neck feels good? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, sometimes Milani suffers with headaches, so that's really good. Yes. You know, she can start to learn how to um, get things back in alignment. And I'm sorry, everyone, we're going to turn our backs, and we'll be right back. We'll be right back. Thank you, Hugh. Hi, my name is Dr. Tom Dow. We have a multidiscipline practice in Melville. I run Cochrane, New York. And we treat patients with many, many different conditions, from newborns through geriatric patients with numerous different techniques. Uh, there's a technique and a, a type of treatment for every class of patient. We have them all here. Here's my son Thomas, also a doctor of chiropractic, working on one of our patient's cervical spine. This patient has had chronic neck pain for many, many, many years, has been to a multitude of different practitioners with little or no response. And with our specialized techniques, she has improved tremendously and continues to improve on a daily basis. Uh, we have two practices, one in Melville and one in Ronkonkoma, New York. We are a multidiscipline um, chiropractic office. Uh, what that means is we have chiropractors, massage therapists, acupuncturists, psychologists, um, all working as a team and a network of outside professionals such as orthopedists and neurologists uh, that we work hand in hand with to help determine what your injuries are and the best way to uh, treat your injuries. Um, I have the great pleasure of having my son in practice with me. Uh, we work hand in hand, father and son, to give our patients the best care possible um, and a staff which is loving, caring, um, and you'll never have to wait at all in our office for service. Many times patients come into our office and they have what's called a soft tissue injury. Soft tissue injuries are like scars inside your body. If you've ever been cut on the outside of your body, you get a scar. The same thing happens inside of your body to your muscles and ligaments. So our job is to determine where those are, stretch the muscles, adjust the vertebra back into their correct position, and then refortify the normal structure with um, exercise. That's what we do best, and I hope someday you'll come see us at one of our two offices. Thank you. Hi, we are back. You've tuned in to Working With What You Got, and we have the master masseuse 
here, Dr. Hugh Maybray, I like to call him the doctor because he's just a wealth of tremendous information. And he's here with his patient for today, Milani Porter. And he was telling us all the great things about how massage therapists are on the front line of wellness. Hugh, continue, please. Yes, well, working with what you got, working with your person here, we can use heat and ice. Mm. So I can get ice right from the um, freezer and put it in like a Ziploc bag. Okay. Yeah, so if the person maybe has a migraine headache where heat makes it feel worse, then we can apply a little ice. So we wrap it in the um, Ziploc bag and put a towel around it, and we can apply ice. Also heat. Nothing works better than an old-fashioned um, um, plastic bottle, right? The, yeah. The, yeah. So that, that just fill it up with hot water, temperature, you know, from the tap, and then you can put, you know, right on the person, wherever you find your spasm, if it's in the lower back. Mm -hmm. A lot of people have tension between the shoulder blades. So putting a little heat or ice there first before I massage really helps to get the blood flowing. Whether it's heat or ice, it does promote circulation in the body. Oh, and that's okay. what we're here to do. Circulation is the key to health. You know, if we look at a running stream, the water is fresh, you can drink it. If we look at a stagnant pool, it gets murky, it's smelly, you can't drink from it. Same thing in the body. As long as the blood and fluids keep moving in the body, bacteria and opportunistic um, organisms cannot colonize in the body. Mm. But once there's stagnation of the fluids and blood in the body, then the opportunistic bacteria start to colonize, give off the toxins, and then we started getting sick, and they were more susceptible wow. to catching stuff. I have never heard, only you would say that bacteria gather together and colonize. Yes. <laughs> I've never, never heard that before. Yes. But, you, but that makes sense, though. I mean, I see it. I see, like, this army coming and trying to attack your body. Yes. We're always under attack by our environment. We're always under attack by our environment. Okay. Yes. So we have to really stay proactive. That's the best way. Yes, Oh, absolutely. you you have to come back. You have to come back. This is a wealth of information. This is something that we can begin right now. Right? You don't need a lot of money to start massaging. No. You can start integrating the simple oils. Keep moving. Yes. Start moving. Yes. Being conscious that the stress factors can really play themselves out in disease and imbalance in the body. Right? Yes, Am I a good student? You are a wonderful <laughs> student. <laughs> All right. Oh. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. And, you You're know, welcome. while you continue, I, we always like to end our show with um, one of the stories. But first, I just have to thank you, Maybray. I've known you actually for about 40 years before he was who he is now, but he's always been brilliant. So none of this surprises me. The fact that he's using it the way he is to serve his community and just to serve all of us is no surprise because he's an awesome individual. Thank you so much, Hugh. You're Thank welcome. you. Um, I want to give a special thanks today to my mom. Today is her birthday. Happy birthday, Grandma Dolly. So my story today is going to be a story about Dolly. Okay, I can remember when I was in elementary school, I can remember getting teased. And I got teased because I always had a big butt. And you probably know that by now if you've been watching the show. <laughs> That's why I kind of stand like this. But I can remember coming to my mom. I was probably like in the fourth grade. And I was crying. I was like, Ma, they tease me. And they're saying I have a big butt. And I was crying. Back, back then, it wasn't popular. You know, J-Lo wasn't on the scene. We weren't applauding all those who had junk in the trunk. Okay, so I felt bad, and I can remember coming and telling my mother about it, and I can remember her looking at me, and my mother's five foot two, and she's a feisty little thing, and she said, what? And she said, let me tell you something, Renee. I didn't even know I was short until Mayor A. Bean became the mayor of New York, and he was standing up next to somebody, and they said the mayor was five foot two, and I said, wow, I'm five foot two. You mean I'm that size? And she said, I didn't even realize it, and I'm married to somebody that's six foot three. So let me tell you something. It's all about how you think. So don't you let them get you upset. She goes, that's the way God made you. And they can't tease you about your behind. What you do is you put your head up in the air and you just let it go. You let it rip. You walk. Boogaraka, 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 boogaraka. You just put your head up and you don't ever let them make you feel bad about the way God created you. 
And from all the way back then, she was showing me how to take the knots out of my mind. And I really believe that we have so much power as mentors, as parents, as adults, to be able to empower our younger generation to accept and work with what they got, what God gave them, and to embrace it. So I don't know where you're at in your life. I don't know if you're still fussing because you got too much junk in your trunk like me. I'm not talking about being out of condition because like Dr. Hughes said, we want to make sure that we don't have a sedentary lifestyle and that we put balance and wholeness into our life. But the way you made, you are made is a masterpiece. Value it, celebrate it. That's what Dolls was able to do for me. That's what I call my mom. Dolls showed me how to celebrate how I was created. And I am so grateful for that. Because of her, I am here. So I'm telling you, free your mind and the rest will follow. Thank you so much for joining us and we will see you next week. Bye-bye.